All right, hello, fun, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Arc Aerospace Wyvern mod, which was originally made back in the day by forum user Zelissa. It's now being brought back by Stone Blue. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a stock-alike take on the SpaceX Dragon capsule. And I do always like seeing additional takes on that. I always find them quite fun. So let's uh, jump on into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what we do get here. Let's grab ourselves a Mark 1-3 command pod for size comparison's sake, and then briefly talk about a couple of things we gotta go over first. And the first point is this is currently still very much a work in progress test release of this mod so there's definitely going to be some tweaks game balancing etc that will occur after the re release of this video so some of the things i show you may change but even in its current state it is still an awesome little command pod that i'd say is very much worth taking a look at now the next thing is prerequisites there are two mods that are required for this to work right and those are b9 part switch and roster prop monitor the latter of the two is of course being used for the interior of this lovely command pod now with all that out of the way let's actually have a look at our first of two parts we get here and that is the wyvern crew capsule which of course is a crude command pod which can hold up to a max of five kerbals but does require at least one kerbal to operate also as a built-in data transmitter it is a lifting surface with a relative wing area of 1.4 it has a reaction wheel the usual crew report of battery holding 250 electric charge and a fuel tank holding 40 monopropellant and as you can see here it's a pretty nicely made thing all in all i love the modeling and texturing on this it's very good i love the details of like the hatch bit up here and there's even if we flip this baby around a hatch bit right there as well all a very good looking and just nice and as i did mention before with the roster prop monitor bit it does have an interior it's a pretty bare bones one using you know the roster prop monitors for the glass cockpit sort of feel but i mean that kind of fits in line with the dragon capsules so i very much enjoy it now one thing i do want to mention about it is on the crew bit it does require one Kerbal to operate at minimum. That may change though. I I'm just going off the mod page here, and in the very first paragraph, I think like the third or second sentence on there says that it's capable of fully automated flight. So that this bit here might be one of those things that does change. But for right now, as of the time of this recording, it does still require one Kerbal to operate. Now, after this lovely command pod, I did say we have another part, and that is down here in engines, and this is the Wyvern engine pod. A pretty basic little radially attached engine with a maximum thrust of 40 kilonewtons in a vacuum with a max ISP of a 250 using a monopropellant and having a tank that can hold between 7.5 and 15 monopropellant. And if we pop it on here, you can see it is a very nice engine. Again, a very good on the modeling and texturing on this thing it just looks a uh, magnificent a little bit of a clipping issue as you can kind of see there with where I'm placing it but if you just kind of move it around you can find some uh, good spots and some not quite so good spots for it and just overall though it fits on quite nicely and just looks good now you may have noticed when I said the uh, engine does have a monopropellant tank holding between 7.5 and 15 and that's because this can switch between a couple of different versions. Now, by default, whenever you grab this thing, it's going to be the monopropellant long version of the engine. But we can also change it to a monopropellant short, which makes about half the length. It still seems to have the same uh, thrust and all that, but the monopropellant tank goes down from the max of 15 here to the max of 7.5. 
Now you can also see we've got two additional tanks here, and these are a liquid fuel and oxygen long, and a liquid fuel and oxygen short versions. Now these do not have built-in tanks, that may or may not change in the future, I don't know, but uh, yeah, they're gonna use liquid fuel and oxygen rather than monopropellant, which is kind of cool. I like that you do have that ability to change between the two, and I like that the monopropellant ones, texture-wise, have this yellow stripe, whereas the LFO ones have an orange stripe. I just think it's a nice little extra bit. And all in all, they are two very good parts that work together nicely, and these engine pods could very easily go onto so many other crafts that you work with, making it a good all-round part for anything, which is always nice to see some reusability from part mods. Now let's head on out to the launch pad, where I already have one of these put together and waiting. So of course we can see the interior and see the engines fire on those little uh, radial engine pods. All together, some very good parts. Now there... Yeah, that noise always seems to pop with this every time you load into the launch pad. That's always a little loud, but all right, there we go. And let's pop straight on into the interior there. And as you can see, we just have the glass cockpit up front with all the different roster prop monitor bits as you've come to expect from anything using a roster prop monitor. And then of course, we do also have that nice elongated window there, which I very much do like because, well, it is a long window on the outside too. And it just gives you a lot of nice view of the outside world compared to a lot of the smaller windows we do tend to get on command pods, which is always cool to see. Now, of course, it does have the five seats, so we've got like the two pilot seats here, and then we've got three seats in uh, the back for additional Kerbals. All good positions, always good there. And I do just overall just love the interior. It got the cool looking seats just all, you know, with all the piping everywhere to hold them in. I like that they're a bit more rounded, giving a bit, a bit more interesting of a look than a standard sort of blocky, more industrial looking chair we tend to see in a lot of things. It's just nice. And of course, the glass cockpit up front, always good to have. And all in all, it's just a fun, lovely little interior. Now, of course, let's get ourselves just a little bit into the air with this engine that I've got under this thing solely so we can then cut this, release, and then immediately fire those monopropellant engines for all of a brief second because, well, it does only hold a tiny amount. So, you know, you're not really gonna get a whole lot out of them, but it's, you know, it's the intended purpose, just to give you a good, nice little bit of thrust for whatever you need, either for a soft landing or for separating from your main rocket stage in a uh, deadly abort situation. But all in all, it's a fun mod with two parts that are very well made and that I very much do enjoy. I mean, who doesn't like having another take on the Dragon Capsule here in the game? It's just a fun part to play around with. So if you'd like to have a look at this mod for yourself, which I'd certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual, my friends. But that is gonna be it for today. Hopefully you all have enjoyed and you do come back for the next win. We'll hopefully be looking yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.